Next on MLR Weekly, U.S. Navy and CRAA College Champion Head Coach Gavin Hickey, Rugby New York's rising star, Manate Aqui. League headlines from Rugby Morning's John Fitzpatrick, the MLR's best recap, and previews from Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Rugby Wrap-Ups MLR Weekly brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig & Whistle, New York City, the world's best rugby pub. And Lean & Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City, and we have a great show for you again this week. We have the head coach of the Naval Academy, the new National Collegiate Champions in CRAA, Mr. Gavin Hickey. We also have Manate Aqui, the rising star of the New York Iron Workers, and we have Brian Ray with America's Rugby News and his previews and predictions and opinions, but we also have our recurring segment to start it off. Rugby Morning's Coffee Break, MLR Headlines and News with John Fitzpatrick. John, welcome. What do you got for us? Hey, Matt, welcome back. The Eastern Conference playoff chase is getting harder to figure out than parking in midtown Manhattan, am I right? Whoa, Broomcha, yes, yes, and that's a D.C. guy with that analogy. Yeah, current look at the Eastern Conference standings show five points separate second place from fifth place. And speaking of second place, Old Glory D.C., they got their win over Dallas, but they only played one half. Thunderstorms and lightning moved into the area, meant that Dallas was prevented from potentially getting their second win of the season, while D.C. was prevented from picking up another table point by getting a, a you know a bonus point win there matt this is the second game that was canceled in mlr because of weather do you think mlr needs to amend or change their policy yeah it's a tough call you know you don't know what the the arrangements are with the particular venues they might only have them for x number of hours in and out you got it you know so that's a problem but i would say the frustration for both teams is felt and again it was felt earlier in the year Maybe the uh, the time period is a little bit longer. Maybe the window's a little bit longer. Maybe it's a two-hour window, if possible. That's what my suggestion would be, because nobody wins here. Next! Hey, let's move on up to New England and the Eastern Conference leaders. They expect last year's Player of the Year, Bodine Waka, to be available for this round's matchup against Old Glory DC. Funny thing happened over the weekend. New England fan Free Jack supporters, led by fan supergroup the First Regiment, met Bodine Waka at Logan Airport at like one in the morning with signs. That's pretty funny. You you, you gotta love to see something like that. Yeah, and our research tells us that um, no, they don't live in their mom's basement. Number one and number two, that we uh, have rumors that say that they were on horseback riding to the airport yelling waka is coming waka is coming waka is coming and it was something about one if by uh, day and two if by night next before we move on do you think they baked and waked for waka it's massive freaking Massachusetts, guy next let's move on over to the western conference where the san diego legion won their eighth straight game but they may be without ageless wonder Ma Nanu. He picked up his third yellow card of the season, which means, I believe, a one, an automatic one-game suspension. Matt, what is this, soccer or something? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This isn't tennis. It's not soccer. It's not even a combination of both. And it's 16-game season. Three yellow cards is nothing. What are we doing here? Next. Hey, man, I want to close you out on a fun fact so our rugby media colleagues brian ray and doug coyle shared this over the weekend but nola gold prop chris shade became the first player to appear in a super rugby americas and major league rugby game in the same season i i think a funner thing would be to see those two either in a boxing ring or in like a wrestling match in jello (laughs) i got no comeback for that all right on that note I want to thank Mr. John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning's Coffee Break. John, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away because we have have plenty ahead of us. And before we get to it, though, we have to look back with our rousing recap right now. 
In Atlanta, the Ruggers, formerly known as the Rattlers, were looking to scare off the snake-bit Chicago Hounds. The Rowita Biddle and Jack Rickshaw show upstage Chicago. The team, not the musical, as Atlanta held a narrow lead before Will Sexy Beast Leonard picked one off and took it in for another great Atlanta try. It was University at Buffalo legend Will Burke at prop, however, who was our MLR Weekly Player of the Week in Atlanta's 27-12 win. Kudos to Chicago owner Phil Groves, though, for chartering his own plane to watch his team. Down to Dallas went the team from the nation's capital, Old Glory, D.C. The hometown Jackals were looking to chase Washington out of Choctaw Stadium and get that elusive second victory. Sticking to the script, Dallas took an early lead on a penalty goal, but failed to score again despite Hapakui hopping into the sin bin for Old Glory. Palatana provided the game's only other scoring with its only try of the match. Indeed, the only other fireworks were those of the natural kind, lightning by Mother Nature, and that canceled the second half, giving Washington a 7-3 victory. To say the rugby gods have been unkind to the Dallas Jackals would be an understatement of epic proportions. Outside Salt Lake City, the San Diego Legion had their hands on their hips for much of the first half, trying to catch their wind in the altitude, but their surfer dude attitude had them regroup after the Warriors hung 10 on them in the first half and gave the hosts the lead. Coach Danny Lee and co. said the right things in the halftime sheds, however, and the Legion scored but three minutes into the second half to retake the lead. The teams then exchanged a series of penalty goals and San Diego nursed a three-point lead with less than five minutes left when pre-med student Michael Smith did just what the doctor ordered, sewing up the victory with a surgical try. San Diego wins a key Western Conference battle 26-16. On the border of the Boogie Down Bronx of New York City at Memorial Stadium in Mount Vernon, the New York Iron Workers and Nolar Gold were each facing what many were calling a must-win match for each. And the team from the Big Easy made scoring the first try look easy as 2019 back of the year J.P. Duplessis continued his resurgent form with a crowd quieting early score. But after that, the Iron Workers laid down some heavy metal and rocked the Sun Splash crowd with unrelenting flair, propelled by Jason Emery and Manate Aqui. New York also deprived Noah of any losing bonus points in the pivotal Eastern Conference battle. Final score, 54-19. Okay, I need a break. You need a break. The sponsors need a break. Let's take a break. Let it. I can't take no loss, huh? I don't even know what it costs, huh? I hit the ground and it go off, yeah. Hit the ground and it go off, yeah. I can't take no loss, huh? I don't even know what it costs, huh? I hit the ground and it go off, yeah. Hit the ground and it go off, yeah, yeah. Run it, run it, ooh. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah, yeah. I really feel it's my time, think it's my. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. And we are back and we have the pleasure of being back with Mr. Gavin Hickey, the head coach of the U.S. Naval Academy and the champions of college rugby, CRAA champions. Gavin, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Matt. It's good to be here. Congratulations, my friend. That was not an easy thing to do. Beat Cal in Houston for the national championship. No, not easy at all, particularly when we put ourselves in a hole to be 15 points down uh, fairly early on and to claw back from that in the, in hot, humid Houston. It was, it was tough going and... I mean, this is only the second time in our program history in 60 years we've beaten Cal, the, the first time being three months ago. So there was a there was a, a, a steep mountain to climb here and a lot of lessons learned and, and excuse the cliches, you know, but um, it's it feels pretty good. 
Yeah, it must feel pretty good because it's a lot that goes into that. I had the pleasure of calling your match versus Army at the Naval Academy, the Prusmac complex, which was fantastic and great. And I, I got I to gotta ask, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed that my guy didn't get player of the match, Sean McClaney, out of Jersey City. <laughs> you know my wife's from Jersey, so I'm I'm all about Jersey. Um, Sean's been critical to us uh, this season, as we knew he would be. We knew. I mean, we we haven't been able to recruit properly uh, before as a club, but I mean, we're fully aware of these young men who who um, are looking at the Naval Academy or considering the Naval Academy. Sean McLean being one of them, Lewis Gray being another. You know, he was considering Dartmouth or Navy, and and at the time, um, James Willocks, who's with me here at uh, at at Navy, desperately tried to get him to Dartmouth. So I'm I'm glad it all worked out pretty well. But Sean was outstanding. He scored a, a key key try for us um just for the struggle of half time uh against Cal. So Sean's got another year for us and I think the best is still yet to come from Sean. You know, these guys, it's it's exciting. These guys are gonna get better. Um they've got time. We had a fairly small first D class senior class uh in our lineup. Um so we're a young team and we're gonna get better. So that's really, really exciting. Having said that, the seniors who who were on the pitch of the seniors have been leading this team all year round, uh, led by Captain Jack McMahon, have been phenomenal. They've they've just set the bar higher for Navy rugby and, and that's you know they leave the better in Jer they leave the place the, the jersey in a better place and they've done everything that we could have asked of them um it's it's I'm, I'm despite my accent I'm a very proud American citizen and it's vital to me that we as a nation continue to develop our American players who will go on and and, and become eagles and and perform the highest level and, and we're all all every one of us have our eyes on uh, World Cup 2031 and, and World Cup 2033 and we can obviously only pick Americans and uh, we need to perform any players on your team or that you've coached against that you could see playing in the MLR you know you, you have to look at the, these top five six seven colleges uh, in in um, in the states they all have players who can who can make the jump so very hopeful that that anybody wants to go and chase that dream, that they get their opportunity and that they go and and contribute to to the MLR. I tell you what, the MLR draft this year is going to be very interesting. What, what, what do you think? Do you think there's going to be a meeting of the minds, a uniting of the clans, so to speak, with NCR and CRAA? I hope so. I hope so. And I don't want to get too political because it it is a minefield, and and you know that you know it's we were both at the CRC um in in Maryland, which was which was fantastic. Um, you know, but then again, the the event out in Houston by CRA was fantastic as well, and and nobody can control the weather. That's out of sight right. of everybody's control, right? So right. we won't go down that route. But it's very important that that we figure this out because we have a, a eight year, seven year window now before the first World Cup here, and we have to be aligned well before then to be able to produce the best players we can to perform on the biggest stage possible. So to answer your question, I'm kind of dodging it a little bit as you as you can tell. Oh, you answered but, it. I mean, you know, you said uh, you hope so. I mean, what's more, what more can you say about about it than that and i look at it from the standpoint of yeah the, you know you know that that unified front brings up what you said okay we could develop the players the best we uh, way possible but also the opportunities for sp sponsors and network coverage and all that stuff right now they come in and they're seeing this splintered thing and they're like eh, eh, maybe but, I'll, I'll wait to see see how this settles yeah i mean it's it's everything i mean some teams are are kind of getting double whammy that they've got to register with with both governing bodies and then and that's that's costly uh financially yeah. costly you know that's 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 a challenge and then speaking to one of my good friends earlier today um um director of rugby at notre dame justin hickey you know it's it, he's he's a very close friend of mine um despite the fact he spells his name wrong but um <laughs> you know we we're kind of getting caught in the middle and we're, we're yeah. kind of getting forced to choose sides and, and nobody wants to do that. So I really hope that we can get aligned. I mean, you know, this as well, like one of the big challenges is seasonality, you know, there's not many other, if any other rugby playing nations that have different, different seasons that we're playing. One I got to st stop you there. I have Tim O'Brien and Jack Clark on camera on my show saying that if they had a directive from USA Rugby, they would switch to 15s in the fall and 7s in the spring. Well, uh, I appreciate that and, and fair play to them. The only thing is you're probably talking to the wrong person, you know, in terms of dedicating so much time to 7s. Um, yeah, well, I yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's that's up to the college. But yeah, if correct. we're all competing for 15s in the fall – then we're all competing at the same time in the 15s program, and then yeah. sevens happens as it will. 
Correct. Correct. But I mean, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to create the best collegiate product possible that these guys can go on and play major league rugby? Or are we trying to make everybody happy and make Olympians perhaps out of some sevens players, which is, which is fantastic. And, you know, I, Matt coach, Matt Sherman, but army has said it a few times, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a choose your own adventure situation at the moment. And we, we've got to get away from that. So yeah. from my own personal perspective, I do like the split season. I, I, we played 18, 15 games this year. i for me, you know, Cal showed, multiple times, as did Life, as did Lindenwood, um, that you can play 15s all season long, and then with a week or two of 7s, you can go win a CRC title. So, for, for me personally, I don't think playing more 7s necessarily makes you a better 7s program or a, a better um, group of rugby players. Playing more rugby makes you better rugby players and a better rugby program. So, I, I'm not sold on this one or the other, or this season has to be this, and this has to be this. And I know that we fit into that mold with most American sports. I get that. But, you know, because we're coming from such a, a, a disadvantage to most rugby nations in terms of the number of games we play as young rugby players, I think we need to play more games and we need to play more 15s in my mind. Uh, and the more we can play, the better. And that's going to help the Eagles in, in the future. So what, whatever it looks like, be it split season of 15s and then a little bit of sevens, be it fall 15, spring sevens or vice versa. I just think we have to. Well, it's great that we're having this conversation about college rugby in the United States. So unfortunately, we have to let you go. But I want to thank you. And again, congratulations, Mr. Gavin Hickey of the U.S. Naval Academy. All right, and we're back, and we have the pleasure, the absolute pleasure of welcoming in Rugby New York iron worker Manate Akui. Manate, welcome to MLR Weekly. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here on this, you know. Really appreciate it. Sir, you are having a meteoric rise in the MLR right now, and I got to tell people about who you are. You basically, you were born in, the, in South Sudan, right? Yes. Yes. And then had to move to Kenya to a refugee camp because of war, that little yes. thing, war, right? Yes. And you were in a refugee camp as a very little kid. Do you remember being in a refugee camp? Yeah, I remember some part of it, you know, because uh, it was like semi-arid desert, so you can't miss that, you know. It was so hot. And, um, yeah, we had to like be in like long lines to get free food or like some aid from the United Nations. So I can't like forget that, you know. So then you're growing up in Kenya. And yes. You moved to Nairobi. Yes, we moved to Nairobi. Stayed there for four years. Then two or four, two or five, we moved to Nakuru, which is another city in Kenya. So that's where, like, I lived the rest of my life until you know before I moved to America. You know, all of this makes you instantly tougher than anybody else on on the team. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm looking at you, Dylan Fawcett, the butcher. This kid. <laughs> Let's talk about. When you picked up rugby? Oh, yeah. Uh, I picked up rugby when I was uh, 12, 13 years old. Because um, we used to train, you know, I used to play soccer. And I loved soccer a lot. I'm and sorry then, to hear that. Yeah. So I loved soccer. And then um, every time after our soccer practice, I used to see these kids walk in with a round, you know, oval ball. And I'm like, what kind of sport is that, you know? Then one day I decided to like, oh, can I can I try, like, train with you guys? And they were like, yeah, come, come through. They showed me how to pass the ball. And then the better part was like, you can hit each other. We hit each other here. I was like, <laughs> wow, okay, now this is the game that I like, you know? So that's how I fell in love with the game and uh, picked it up from there, you know? You you came to – how did you transition to the States? 2019, I was playing um, – I think that was like my break breakout year when I started playing for the, uh, the Kenya 15s. And then after playing for the Kenya 15s, the Kenya 7s called me up too because after playing for Kenya 15s, I have six international cups from um, the Kenya 15s. Uh, the sevens were like, yeah, come um, have a shot with us and let's see, you know, what you can bring to the table. So I played in Safari Sevens and we won it, you know, as the Kenya B, Kenya Morans, because um, they were Kenya fielded like two teams. So Kenya A and Kenya B. So I was like part of the Kenya Morans, which was the Kenya B. And we won everything. And wow. Like, okay. So for sure, yeah. And then they named the team to like play in the HSBC series 2019, 2020. And I was a part of it. And then um, there was a tour to LA. But then I got injured like a week before ah. coming to Los Angeles. So I was like, I'm still going to go there to Los Angeles, you know. So I came to L.A. for L.A. 7s. And then um have this, um like my mom now, Susan Eastwood, that I met in Kenya. She's a Christian missionary. And um she has this foundation called Now Kenya, where we take care of abused women in the community. So she asked me to be ambassador, you know. So back home, I used to, like, speak on behalf of her, of the center, and I'm um, raising more awareness of what she's doing. So when I came to the U.S., I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Virginia real quick and say hi to Susan, and then I'll fly back home. 
So when I flew to the East Coast, that's when everything got shut down. No flights home, no nothing. So I had nowhere to go. Because of but, COVID. Um, yes, COVID, yeah. That's when everything got shut down because of COVID. So that's how I just ended up living in America. I saw the Old Blue gave me an offer. They were like, hey, Monate, come play with us. Uh, like rugby New York, they used to like, you know, come to our games and all that. And then they spotted me, they identified me. And um, they were like, okay, we would like you to play for us. And um, this was getting my visa straight. And uh, it took a while, like two years. And then when I finally like got it straight, they signed me immediately. And um, I've been living my dream since, you know. That's awesome, man. And, and, you know, unfortunately, your team has had a lot of injuries, but it's presented this opportunity for you and you have taken it. I mean, I, and you got a big week, a big game against Chicago coming up. Mm -hmm. um, the boys are, you know, feeling good after that win. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, every, every game counts and uh, we have the momentum with us now. So I believe like the boys um, are going to do everything possible and uh, we're surely going to get a win this weekend. You are a great addition and I am so happy that you had the time to come on this show and I wish you nothing but the best. Mr. Thank you. You're a queen. We'll be right Thank back. You. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. This is The Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and we're back with Mr. Brian. Hashtag too soon Ray with the lightning behind him. Brian, Brian. Too soon. Too soon. Sensitivity training failed. Ah, this is this is an actual picture of the culprit that, that resulted in this disaster from the weekend. All right. Let's let's not dwell in the past. Let's go forward. Your arrows hosting rugby ATLers. Jeez, the arrows, six games left, five of them are at home, every single one of them against a team that is still in playoff contention. So their only, you know, role from now to the end is to play a spoiler. ATL desperately wants this. We know that Stephen Brett has identified, I mean, these next three games for ATL are critical, absolutely everything for the playoff race. So they're coming in, they're not resting bodies, they're coming in, you know, guns blazing, and their forward pack is just menacing. The scrum is not somewhere where, where the arrows have shined. You got to take ATL on the road. Tough one for Toronto. You know, they, they're going to want to front up, but I just don't think uh, they're going to have enough in this one. Houston versus Seattle? Absolutely a massive game. Houston at home, very tough. Uh, you know, Big Joe, uh, another week to settle in, into that side is really nice for them. Maybe they get a body or two back as well. They've had a couple bumps and bruises. Seattle coming into this one. I mean, they they look pretty good last time at home too. They're on the road though, so. And they're and also is, without Hatting. Broke, broken foot surgery out for the year. Well, not, out, not necessarily out for the year, but he had surgery on, they put a plate in his broken foot. This is news to me, and that is terrible news for in your face, Seattle. America's rugby news. <laughs> MLR oh, Weekly breaking that one, folks. Uh, that's not great for Seattle, is it? Well, when you put it that way, I think we're going to go with Houston at home. <laughs> that's that's really bad, tough news for the Seawolves. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and again, you can't publish that news because it's our news, and the show comes out Thursday. How about Nola? And they, as you said, are now banged up. And the HIAs that they got with Fife and Devin Short and Billy Stewart, who are all on their feet and talking after the game. And it doesn't get any easier as they have San Diego coming in. San Diego, whose hat I'm wearing because they're still winning eight games in a row. They're just a couple off New England's record now. And you'd have to say they're probably you know, not going to break it this week i don't think against a bad i mean nola's at home obviously they want to at least get some points out of this one but i just don't see them winning against that high-flying san diego said so i think the legion might rest a couple bodies uh for this one just understanding that nola's so beaten up but uh you know hard luck on the gold uh they still got games after this so they're not out of it yet but i don't think this is going to be the week. dallas utah dallas is again just like toronto they're in that spoiler mode now and they've got some good players on that team uh, can they spoil Utah? Uh, man, 
yeah, I, I got to go with Utah. They're the better side in this. But, you know, is this one of those games where Dallas can kind of sneak in there and at least cause some problems? Maybe yes. pull it into the 70th minute? Then we've got D.C. hosting New England. New England is just, uh, you know, a class apart. And guess who has now arrived from Japan? Bodin Waka. Is he coming off the bench? Is I was going to say Dennis Rodman. Excellent. Yeah, him too. <laughs> so, oh, that's China. Never mind. <laughs> So this is a, a rested team. I mean, they're missing Jesse Peretti, but they'll, I don't think that's going to phase them at all. Is that is that necessarily a bad? I mean, missing yeah, Jesse there you go. Card Peretti. I mean, is that? Maybe they'll get through a game with, you know, all 80 minutes with all their 15 players on the pitch. Uh, you, but, know, you know, you hold on, Brian. You also said about D.C. with their discipline and everything else. New England, despite their record, is not the most disciplined team. They, they oh, can I, rack up some penalties. Absolutely not. The discipline has been their major downfall, uh, by far the biggest weakness this year, but hasn't been exploited enough by other teams. Uh, you yeah. have to say, you know, so it doesn't matter if they keep giving penalties if no one else wants to put points on the board against them. So I just think New England is too strong for this game. Uh, you know, it'll be a good game. I'm sure it will be, but... Uh, I don't see uh, D.C. troubling uh, the Free Jacks enough to, to get the win. All right. And finally, Chicago versus New York. New York showing some life, some signs, some some up, uh, up uh, f- front foot rugby, as they say. And when they needed it most, they stepped up in a big fashion. And they're getting a little bit healthier, slowly but surely. They're not getting some of those big pieces back. We're not going to see Heighton. We're not going to see Brendan O'Connor. Um, but Jason Emery stood up tall in a big way it's you know it's a tough one uh, new york played really well you could tell that they are up for this game and it's it's hard because you you, you don't want to take too much away from them because nola flopped for half an hour i mean nola after that collision nola was not even in the in the conversation for half an hour but you know new york can only play what's in front of them and they did the business i mean uh teofilo fido stunning on the left wing he looked like he had no knee problem at all he looked great uh, you know, you already mentioned Amory. You know, I, I thought, you know, Cole, whenever he touched the ball, was out there. Manate Akue is just, oh, how is this guy not an MLR before now? Is and that's why he was on today's show just earlier. So that, you know. he's He's been tremendous. Absolutely outstanding. He's uh, He looks great. Uh, Chicago, another disappointing game against ATL. You know, last week I said, hey, this is a game maybe they could step in and, and sneak a victory. Just the same kind of thing. They're they're in the game till 50, 60 minutes, and then they just fade away. Uh, they've got to solve that. they got a couple banged up. Late. Hopefully, they're getting Hugh Roach back. He was a late scratch uh, for this last game. He will help a lot and certainly give them a bit of zip up front. You know, is Bryce Campbell going to be back in the starting lineup? They, they dropped in this past match. I, I, I would suspect that he'll be back this time, and I think you got to pick New York on the road in this one. And uh, Chicago, they've just got to find something in these last two games of the season. I agree with you on that. Um, On that note, my friend, we are out of time. I want to thank Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Thank you to John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. Thank you to Mr. Gavin Hickey of the U.S. Naval Academy. Thank you to Manate Aqui of New York. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including The Rugby Odds, The College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. It will kill you. And please join our American Red Cross blood donor team.